Hey everybody, Hoopus Cat. Fairly dull video coming up, but somewhat important. I'm going to talk about what actually NSADs are, in case you're actually taking them now. I'm going to tell you some important stuff. If you're on S NSAD, keep taking it. Talk to your doctor, talk to your nurse practitioner. Talk about whether you should come off it if you get COVID-19 symptoms or not. People are on medications for a lot of different reasons. Don't just react to what's being said and the French early report. Of course, the main reason you probably want to watch this is to find out what medications I'm taking. Medications I'm taking, I take a blood pressure medication. I now have six months of it with another three months prescription. I don't dependent on it. I can skip it two or three days and be just fine. And I need to do some lifestyle changes and get off it entirely, but I haven't. Maybe now I will. So in addition to that prescribed medication, I, we do take a multivitamin and we take a vegan version of it and it's quite expensive. But any basic cheap multivitamin, take it. I think it's a good idea right now, probably not allergic to any of the stuff in it. The other thing I'm taking is vitamin D, 2000 milligrams every day. That's in response to COVID-19. Uh, it's fairly clear that vitamin D isn't gonna cause me much problems and might be somewhat protective in these circumstances pretty well covered online. Uh, look at it, don't take my recommendations for this, I'm not your doctor and I'm not a doctor and I cannot diagnose you at all, even by text. So this is what I'm taking. The other thing I started taking yesterday was NAC, uh, N-acetylcysteine. I always say it wrong. Um, but anyway, I'm taking that and I've decided to take that. Kitty is still on the fence. Parents haven't been informed about taking it yet, but I'm thinking we need to. Once Kitty makes a decision to take it, we will then provide it to them. And I've discussed it with her sister, who is a nurse, and she thinks it's a well worth looking at and well worth considering. So she's also going to do her own research into it, because any research you do is always biased to your internal beliefs. So I want her to look at it as well. I've asked a few people online, um, it's really hard to get anything significant about NAC and COVID-19. But the actual drug itself is interesting. So this is going to be a bunch of slides. It's going to talk about a whole bunch of things related to NAC supplementation. And I will give you my opinion on scientifically based. So this is a list of the NSADs that are currently available in North America. There is actually two more at the bottom of this that I didn't put on because they're actually discontinued. Uh, there will be a link to this and there will be a link to all the NAC stuff as well uh, in the description. Uh, do your own research, but do bear in mind if you're on these medications for a medical reason, do not discontinue them because you think it might protect you from getting ICU if you get COVID-19. Totally keep taking them. But maybe reach out to your medical provider and talk to them about if there's something else you could use or if you should keep taking them if you have flu symptoms. So N-acetylcysteine, I'm just gonna call it NAC because I can't deal with <laughs> saying that every time. Basically, it's from an amino acid. It's not a vegan sauce. It's a vegetarian sauce. Uh, egg and milk, I believe, Meg um, I believe. But it also has some plant sauces. But you know what? I'm vegan, but I'm taking it. It's an SHTF, get real. What it's been commonly used for is a whole bunch of things. What we use for in healthcare is actually pretty much the only use we use for this is IV use for it uh, for Tylenol overdose, cinnamon ethanol overdose. That's pretty much what we give. And it was interesting to me to find out we can use it for nitrate tolerance because I've never seen it used for that, but apparently it can. So this is a prescribed medication that you can buy without a prescription in America and Canada. United Kingdom, no idea, sorry. So it directly binds with Tylenol and prevents liver death, which is pretty good. Uh, it is a known antioxidant, so that's kind of an interesting one. It definitively would be used in the ICU IV to stop you getting Tylenol poisoning. If you have Tylenol poisoning or think you have Tylenol poisoning, don't take oral NAC, right? Go to a doctor, go to a hospital, even in a pandemic. Uh, it has been used for partial or total lung collapse and for mucus blockage. Uh, it's been effective for that. It's also used quite often for people going for lung tests to get them ready for the lung tests. And it's also been used for tracheostomy care, which is an artificial hole in your neck to allow you to breathe. It reduces the crusting people often get with that. Now this one's where it gets sort of interesting. It's been seen to reduce orally shortness of breath and coughing. 
uh, due to mustard gas exposure. Now, hopefully you won't get exposed to mustard gas, but you never know. And they also use it for persistent air passage swelling. But over time it's not effective. But you have to take it for a long time, not a short time. And this is where it gets interesting. COPD, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, Will of Just-In-Time Prepping has that. I believe Christine has that as well, Reverend Christine. A few people have it. It's generally from industrial exposure, but most people get it from smoking. So that's why you shouldn't smoke. Or vape, I would argue. Anyway, it's been used by mouth, and it seems to decrease flare-ups by 40% and remove the coughing, the phlegm, the sputum consistency to make it easier to cough it up, which is one of the problems they have. Scientific research suggests that knack by mouth seems to reduce flu symptoms. So the severity of flu seems to be reduced if you're tasting knack. Now bear in mind, we have no idea because COVID-19 is novel. It is new. We don't know if it will do anything for that or it could in fact make it worse. By beware. Now all of those were evidence that worked. This is evidence that isn't proof that it works, but it might work. So everything you've just seen, an ACK works. This, it might work. ARDS, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. So that's one of the terminal things people from COVID-19 have. And again, it's intravenous use is what they've used. And research is conflicting. Some research says it works, some research says it makes it worse. People at the moment don't know. It might help with asthma, we don't know. So COVID-19 disease is from the SARS-CoV-2 virus and it causes a viral pneumonia at the level of the alveoli, which is the functional unit of the lung, the tiny little end parts of the lung. Okay, so when you see things like this might work for idiopathic interstitial pneumonia, don't be fooled by pneumonia think, well, that's viral pneumonia, this might work. It is entirely different, different. There's many, many types of pneumonia. So it didn't affect lung function, which is actually, does it actually make them better or not? But it did seem to improve their function. It's arguable. I warn you about this. This may not be true, but it may make you more likely to breed uh, if you're infertile. It can improve sperm concentrations. Uh, they don't know whether it's actually the movement and shape is improved or whether there's just more of them. So there you go. If you're infertile, don't assume you'll stay infertile if you start taking NAC, if you're man. Doesn't work for women. So they felt that eight weeks of this with talk therapy could reduce symptoms better than just the talk therapy and depression. However, they only use war veterans and war veterans who had substance abuse, so we don't know. Uh, they felt it also reduced the cravings to use the drugs or alcohol in these veterans. Now, bearing in mind, I think maybe the talk therapy was more important than the NAC, but Again, from my point of view, in March 2020, anything that reduces my anxiety and my depression, which I'm feeling over having to do, deal with SARS-2, having dealt with SARS-1 and nursed a whole bunch of people with SARS in the ICU back in 2003, I'll take it as a freebie. Okay, so what are the side effects and how safe is this? So I have ignored inhalation and IV therapy. I really don't recommend that for home use at all. But oral use, let's have a look at this. So NAC is likely safe for most adults, which means it's as safe as anything else out there. It can cause nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea or constipation. Now, just a word for you, any medication you pretty much can cause those for, any medication. However, rarely it can cause rashes and fever, headache, drowsiness, low blood pressure, and liver problems. So again, take this, be careful. Know what liver problems would look like without blood work. Know about drowsiness and low blood pressure. Know about rashes and fevers. Look out for this. Monitor yourself. Now, the raw form of this has an unpleasant odor that makes it hard to take. I had no problem taking mine. It seemed just fine to me in the capsules. There is some specific precautions and warnings that you need to be aware of. Do not take this if you're breastfeeding or pregnant. It probably is safe, but who knows, who cares? Protect the fetus at all chance and the baby. If you know you're allergic to a NAC, don't take NAC. Um, rashes, fever, etc. You'll find out. If you've got asthma, be aware if you take this by mouth, you might actually cause bronchospasm. So don't take the full doses if you have asthma. Take one dose once a day for a bit and see what's happening and you could have should of course do this in a hospital and be monitored by your healthcare provider so i don't recommend this if you have asthma i do not now, it might cause bronchospasm if you've got asthma so if you have asthma do not take this medication 
unless the doctor tells you to. I do not have asthma. So I absolutely do not recommend you start this if you have asthma at all. Bleeding disorders. So it might slow blood clotting. So if you know that you bleed easily or if you're on a blood thinner, don't take this. Okay. If you know you're going to have to have surgery, don't take this. Stop it at least two weeks before surgery. Of course, you don't know if you're going to need emergency surgery. It's a risk. However, there's two major interactions that you need to be aware of. Do not take this if you are taking nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is for, uh, for cardiac issues, specifically for angina. It can make you really dizzy and really lightheaded and with a headache. So this makes nitroglycerin, if you're taking it, much more effective. It's a major interaction. It's a serious, dangerous interaction. However, if you're taking nitroglycerin, it's not really effective and you're still getting chest pain, this might help. Good and bad for everything. If you're going to plan to kill yourself and you're going to take oral poisons by mouth, don't take NAC because it won't. It stops the uh, activated charcoal from working well and you'll probably die. Dosing. What I'm taking is 600 milligrams TID three times a day. That's what I'm taking. That's the dose I came up with. The reason I came up with that dose, if you flip through this list of dosing, so what I came up with is 600 milligrams orally, and that's what I'm taking. And I'm taking that TID, which is three times a day. The reason I'm taking it is because for lung disease, it leaves a scarring and thickening of the lung. That's why I'm taking it. I'm trying to prevent myself from catching COVID-19, which NAC might do, and it also might reduce the symptoms and severity of the symptoms. This is guesswork. This is voodoo. This is snake oil, right? There's no treatment. I think, having read upon this, I don't think there's any particular dangers to take it. For me, there might well be for you, and I've decided that I'm going to try this. Who knows if it works or not. You can't do clinical studies in this beginning of a pandemic. It just isn't possible. So to reduce influenza, they're actually 600 milligrams BID, which is twice a day for up to three months. 30 months, sorry. That's kind of stunning, isn't it? Um, I, I think what they're basically saying is don't take it for more than 30 months. So if you haven't got much money or you don't have a limited supply of this, I would take it BID not three times a day. At the moment, I'm going to take it three times a day and assess my stocks and see how long it lasts for. And I just put the part in there because it's there. It is also used for end-stage renal disease. So people who have had strokes and heart attacks may have already been prescribed this medication. If you have, you might find it cheaper to buy it. There's very little information on children and I do not recommend you give this to your kids at all. And the use for autism, pretty much it doesn't seem to work, though some people do use it. But it needs to be with risperidone and it needs to be under a medical supervision. Well, that's it. Um, don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it online. No, I'm not selling it. No, I'm not recommending if you take it. And no, I'm not telling you where to get it from. I got a fairly large supply from Amazon.ca about two weeks ago after a subscriber suggested it to me and sent me a few research links, which seemed promising. And it seemed to me at the price at the time and the availability at the time I should buy and act. And I acted. I'm really glad I did. Um, because it was kind of restricted to buy. It was a bit difficult, but it came and I got it. So if you are thinking of going into something like NAC, I would act sooner rather than later. Um, at the moment, nobody's really talking about it other than in the kind of pharmaceutical land. Nobody's saying that they're taking this. Nobody's being open and honest about it. Given the fact we declared a state of emergency in Ontario, I think it's time I actually am honest to my subscribers about what I am personally doing. Again, do not take my word for this. Do not. And if you have any real serious contraindications for this that I've overlooked, please let me know. Okay? Anyway, remember in SHTF, tomorrow will always be worse than today. Unless you're prepared, or it's a pandemic. Toodles. <laughs>